Zoe Harkham, I'm the author of The Harkham Diet. Please don't be frightened off by this topic, but I want to talk about thermodynamics. Now, in the world of dieting, you will hear so often, energy in equals energy out. And that's the only thing that matters in terms of weight loss. No biochemistry is taken into account. No knowledge of what actually happens to lay down fat in the body, how different foods are used by the body. It literally is as simple as, if I put a sandwich into my mouth and I don't expend, let's say it's a 400 calorie sandwich, if I put a 400 calorie sandwich into my mouth and I don't then use up 400 calories, they even use this three and a half thousand formula to work out exactly how much fat is going to get laid down on my hips. And similarly, they say if I eat less to a certain amount, I'm going to use directly a certain amount of body fat to provide the energy for this deficit that I've created. It's so wrong, you almost don't know where to start in terms of how wrong it is. But it goes back to thermodynamics. And when people, people working in the world of obesity, dietitians, nurses, doctors, nutritional advisors, whoever it is, so many people get this wrong. They will glibly say energy in equals energy out and you can have a little bit of fun with them if you want because the first thing you have to say is show me the law of physics that says energy in equals energy out because there isn't one. There are four laws of this physics. They're sometimes called the laws of the universe, they are also called thermodynamics. If you hear any of those expressions they are talking about the same thing. There is a zeroth law which is added at the end, don't worry about that one for this stage. There is the first law, the second law, and the third law. Now, what people have done is to take the first law and massively oversimplify it. I wonder if they've actually even ever read what the first law of thermodynamics says, because it does not say energy in equals energy out. What the first law of thermodynamics says is, in a closed system, in thermal equilibrium, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, it shall be conserved. And that was Mayer's definition from 1941, voted the best on the websites of thermodynamics worldwide. So the human is not a closed system. We're losing heat the whole time. We wee, we poo, we sweat. There is stuff leaving the body the whole time. We are not a closed system. And to be fair, some experiments have tried to incorporate that and they'll try and put humans in a bubble to try and capture what is being lost to the human body. But that's only one part to it. We're not a closed system. We're not in thermal equilibrium. So what thermodynamics then says is, that's okay. We know that. That's why we've got the second law. And the second law is also called entropy. And it's also called the law of common sense. The second law says energy will be lost and energy will be used up in making available energy and we need to take that into account. You know, we put a gallon of petrol into a car and it would get the car a certain distance depending on the efficiency of the car. Not every single car will go the same way. So we know that energy is used up in making available energy. So that's the second one, that's the one that we have to factor in. So the idea that anything we put in is just directly going to fuel the energy out is just so fundamentally horribly wrong. Without going into to much more detail, some excellent physicists and biochemists, Jackie A. springs to mind, Richard Feynman, Fine, who works with him over in New York, some brilliant people are doing some work in the area of this, looking at the different impact of different foods on how the body can turn them into energy. As a quick example, these guys have shown that, let's say you eat 100 calories of banana, 94 might be available to the body as energy. So hardly any is used up in making energy for the body. Eat something like protein, white fish, um, chicken breast, you know, real food in the Harkham diet. Only about 70 calories could be available to the body to then use up as energy. That's a heck of an advantage. From two people eating 100 calories, one has got a 25% metabolic advantage straight away by virtue of what they have eaten, not how much they have eaten. And this whole energy in, energy out thing, they also say a calorie is a calorie, a calorie is only a calorie to the extent that an inch is an inch. It's a tautology, it's the same, the same thing in a different way. A calorie is not a calorie in terms of nutrition, it's not the same the minute you put it into the human body. The human body handles carbohydrates, protein and fats so incredibly differently, it's not true. Those are the first two things that we've got horribly wrong. We've oversimplified the first law, we've ignored the second law. The third interesting thing is that even if you took the simple um, aspect of thermodynamics, even, even if you do what they do and get it wrong and say energy in equals energy out, then surely 
The corollaries, we said a logical conclusion from that statement, is that put less energy in and you'll get less energy out. Put more energy in and you'll get more energy out. The idea that you can put less energy in, try and get the body to do more, and it will use itself up. There is no example of that in thermodynamics. There's no branch of the laws of physics that said put less into a system and it will use itself up in any way, shape or form. There, there is just no um, previous law or history that would ever say do that kind of thing. The most logical thing that will happen if you put in less into the body is that the body will adjust. I think it's something like 90% of what goes on in terms of what we put in and what we get out is actually going on inside. So put less in and the body has so many things it can shut down. It can turn off the reproductive system, anorexics, periods stop very, very quickly. It can turn off the heating system, people are too skinny, just get cold all the time. It can turn off so many things. It is not just going to give up fat in the way that dietitians, nutritionists, whatever, think that it's going to. So quick fly there through some of the laws of thermodynamics and some of the ways in which we've got them wrong. And again, please, next time you hear energy in, energy out, please be tuned into the fact that it's way more complex than that. And it's probably the single biggest thing that has driven our dieting advice the wrong way over the past 30 to 50 years. Thanks very much for listening.